Okay, everybody, so we're in my 2019 and we're going to have a little bit more fun with NCloth. I did a couple of videos in the last uh, few weeks and uh, this is kind of in that series, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a simple piece of fabric. In this case, it's a polygon plane. I'm going to hit R and I'm going to scale that up to about the size of my grid. And I don't want the system to lock up here, so what I'm going to do is hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. We're going to go in and we're going to set the subdivision level to 30 by 30. Now, keep in mind that after you create the actual NCloth object, whatever you do, do not delete the history. As soon as you do that, your NCloth object is dead. Okay, so don't do that. All right, so I got this and now I'm going to go into my FX menu. I'm going to go up to NCloth and we're going to create NCloth. Now, when I do that, if I open up my attribute, my uh, sorry, my outliner, You'll see that I now have a plugin plane. I have a nucleus that has been created and I have an NCloth object right here. Okay. So I got all of that kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to set my animation slider to let's say 300 or so. And I'm just going to hit play and see what happens. And as expected, it's falling straight down. Now, the question is, why wouldn't it fall straight down? There's nothing to hold it in place. The only thing that it has is a gravity of 9.8. And I'll show you. If you open up the attribute editor again, and we go into the nucleus, it says right here, gravity is 9.8 positive. And it also says that the gravity direction is X, Y, Z. So it's negative one and Y. Y is upward, it's negative one, so it's downward. So it has a gravity of 9.8 pulling it down, okay? So if you know that, you can play with that and we'll do in a second. Let's say we'll set gravity to one instead of 9.8. Let's play that again. And as you can see, much, much, much slower. Let's set this to 100. Hit play. There you go. Kind of explains itself, right? Okay. We're going to go back to 9.8. Let's set that gravity to one positive. So in the Y direction going up. There you go. Let's go back. Let's see. Let's set the gravity direction in X. Let's do one here. Let's do zero here. And there you go. Okay. Pretty easy, right? Okay. We're going to set this back to zero. We're going to set the direction back to negative one. So all is back to normal in the world. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take this guy and we're going to restrain it in one corner. So I'm going to go up to this corner right here and I'm going to right click at a vertex and just take that little vertex in the corner. And with that selected, I'm going to go up to uh, end constraint and I'm going to go to transform constraint. Now this changes everything because suddenly there's something holding, holding it in place. Okay. So we're going to go back, we're going to select this guy, and we're going to simply hit play and see what happens. And suddenly it's staying right there and it's starting to act like actual fabric. Kind of cool, right? All right. So now that we have that, and it's playing on a loop here, now that we have that, let's jump back to frame one and let's see if we can kind of play with that. So we're going to go to our end cloth, uh, sorry, to our uh, end cloth shape here. And we can change, for example, under presets, the type of fabric we want. You can uh, go with the silk, you can go with the t-shirt material and so forth and so on, right? So let's see, we'll do chain mall, hit replace. Let's hit play. And you see that it's falling quite fast and it looks quite heavy, right? We're gonna go back in, we're gonna go to presets. Let's try silk and replace. Hit play, much slower much subtler kind of neat right okay i'm going to jump back so what are we going to do next so we're going to go in here to uh let me think uh where to go where to go where to go and yeah we're going to go under the uh, nucleus okay so the nucleus is basically the powerhouse where you can do stuff right so here we have our gravity we played with that how about wind speed we've got wind speed and wind direction so we're going to increase the wind speed. And right now the wind direction is set to one on X. All right. So I'm going to set it to zero first. So there's no wind direction. Okay. 
and we're going to set wind direction to 5 and hit play. Let's see what happens. Well, not a lot. And why should it? Because it's not coming from anywhere, right? So we're going to stop that. We're going to jump back. Let's set the, uh, the wind direction to, uh, I don't know, 1 positive in Y. Hit enter. Hit play again. It's going straight up. There you go. Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here. And with Adam, I can make any of these videos for you guys, so show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged, and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel and no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. So what if we uh, include uh, one in Z as well? Suddenly it's changing direction. And you have a lot of control right now over your fabric. Okay, it's jumping back. And what it'll do is increase the number of frames to a thousand. And jump back to frame one. And let's play that out so you can see what's going on there, right? So you've got wind coming from two directions. It's going uh, straight up and it's going in uh, Z direction, right? Kind of cool, isn't it? And there you go. All right, we're gonna stop that. We're gonna jump back. So let's see, what we'll do here is the wind speed will uh, set that all back to zero for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna constrain another corner so let's see i don't exactly remember which one i did yeah there is you can see there's a tiny little cross on that corner there so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to right click and go to your vertex drag click this one and under end constraint go to transform constraint okay let's hit play again i set everything back to normal so it's falling down it's now held in place in two corners as before right Let's stop that, jump back to frame one. Let's go into my nucleus right here. And let's see what we'll do. The gravity direction, uh, we'll leave that alone. That's okay. Let's play with the wind a little bit more. So wind speed is five. Uh, let's do one in Y, all right? And we're gonna hit play. And there you go. It's going straight up. However, what if we can mess with that a little bit by introducing some noise? And you can see how cool this is, right? So first, let's increase that uh, wind speed a little bit. Just gonna bump that up. It's at 14 right now. You can see it's starting to stretch out and really respond, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we, we can change the air density, which will have an effect, but I wanna introduce some noise here. And introducing the noise will give you a little bit of variance in uh, the behavior. And you can see it's going a bit up, it's going a bit down. Uh, let's see if you can go crazy with this. Let's do five. And now you've got some real noise going on, right? And it's flipping up and down and round and whatnot. Let's not go crazy. Let's bring it back to about 1.5. Let's have it calculate. There you go. All right, pretty cool. Okay, so we have that. Now we played with uh, that, we played with the wind noise, wind speed. Let's see what happens when we increase the density. Basically meaning something like, I would almost call it thicker wind, if that's a thing, right? This is gonna push it all the way down. There's no air density. Starting to move that up. As you can see, it's going nuts. All right. 
Okay, so now that we have that, what else do we have? Well, let's see here. I'm just gonna stop this guy. I'm gonna jump back to frame one and we're gonna constrain the other two corners, right? So we're gonna go in here, right click at a vertex, drag select that one, and we're gonna drag select that one. And we're gonna go to, uh, where do you go? Uh, transform constraint. Okay, let's hit play. Now, this is starting to become interesting. Well, first of all, you don't see a lot, a lot of noise going on, but this can be useful for so many things. Uh, you can see it's starting to move around a bit, probably because of that. Uh, let's see, I think we got that noise going on there. So I'm gonna reduce the noise to zero. And let's bring the wind speed down a bit. Starting to calm down, as you can see, and you can go nuts and it will probably break at some point if you push it too far so let's slow that down a bit so now that you have this and like I said as long as you don't delete your history you have an active and cloth material right now uh, keep in mind you can use this to create a balloon you can have a balloon constrained to a basket for example you can have it move in a certain direction you can have the balloon fabric move you can have a scarf or a clothing on a character. You can just sew so many things. Now, just to make this a little bit more interesting, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop, jump back to frame one. And I'm gonna go to my top view here. And I'm just gonna take that vertex smack in the middle. So that little vertex right there, right? And we're gonna go up and we're gonna go to transform constraint once again. Now, the reason why I'm demonstrating this is uh, if you ever saw a hot air balloon, you know that it has lines on the side, right? Where uh, the balloon doesn't bulge as much. So if we hit play right here, there you go. And the cool thing is you can even use this method if you want to have, let's say, pushed in buttons on a couch. So if I wanted to kind of hold this shape and freeze it, I could select it right now. So I could hit stop. I could select it, I could go to edit, delete by type history, the end dynamic uh, or the end cloud dynamic would be gone and I would have this fabric specifically as it's showing right now, right? So like I said, that's why you don't want to uh, move that or uh, delete that, that, the history, okay? Okay, let's see, what else do we got? Um, Let's go back here. Uh, well, we have all sorts of dynamic properties, the stretch resistance, and I showed you guys that in the other videos. If you want to tear the material, you can um, use a different presets for that. But basically, uh, holding down the corners, uh, playing with wind speed, with gravity uh, value, and with direction will give you a lot more control over end cloth, right? So please let me know in the comments if there are any areas where you want me to go in further when it comes to end cloth uh, materials. And uh, if you uh, have any questions, I'll address them, okay? Well, thank you so much for watching, as always. If you haven't already, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. It will help me out so much. And see you guys next time. Bye.